Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, today we're continuing in Matthew chapter 12, and we're in the middle of Matthew chapter 12, and uh, it seems the religious leaders of the day, as they were so often, were, were being threatened by Jesus because he was performing miracles. And on this particular day, uh, there was a man with a demon who Jesus exercised. And, and before, he was blind and he was mute, and afterwards, Jesus' power was unmistakable because he could see and he could talk. And so because they were so threatened, uh, the Pharisees, who were the religious leaders, tried to discredit Jesus. And, and they claimed that, wow, he must be using Satan's power to do this work. And, and, and Jesus exposed their illogical accusation by saying, you know, not even Satan would try to drive out Satan. Um, he knows that uh, a nation divided against itself would never stand. And of course, we know that that's a... Uh, a, a verse that Abraham Lincoln would quote uh, in 1858 as he was running for the Senate about the United States and slavery. Um, Jesus continues and he talks about the fact that his power, despite their irrational claim, is, is greater than anything Satan could ever throw against them. And it's further evidence that he's from God and that he's more powerful than Satan. Uh, verse 29 says this, it says, for for who was powerful enough to enter the house of a strong man and plunder his goods? Only someone even stronger, someone who could tie him up and then plunder his, his house. Now, uh, this first part of these, this verse is, is, uh, of this section is, 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 is pretty uh, easy to understand, but the second part is not nearly as easy to understand. Jesus continues with a statement that uh, actually has caused much anxiety and commotion among Christians over, over the many years. Uh, verse 32, it says, Anyone who speaks against the Son of Man can be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven, either in this world or in the world to come. So this is known as the unforgivable sin passage. And we always try to figure out, well, what is that unforgivable sin? Is it murder? Is it suicide? Is it, is it addressing profanity to God? Is it, is it returning to the same sin that I vowed to many times never to refer, return to? And we can say unmistakably, no, it's none of those. In this passage, it seems that, that Jesus is condemning the Pharisees for, for being so hard-hearted and blinded that they have rejected the, the Holy Spirit's continued ongoing attempts to show them Jesus' love. Now, I realize that this explanation that I've given is not totally satisfying, and please know that I've never really read one or studied one that is totally satisfying. But here's what I do know for sure about the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit is very resilient, and the Holy Spirit does not give up on us. In fact, that sin of any that sin of any kind even concerns you is a sign that the Holy Spirit is still very much at work in your life. If you're concerned about having committed this unforgivable sin, then you're not there yet. A hardened heart is not concerned about sin. This is what we read in Romans chapter 5. He says, uh, For we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. And then skipping again to Romans 8, it says, Nothing in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Today I want you to thank God uh, that his spirit is living within you and, and, and that his spirit is more powerful than anything, even our fears and our doubts. And so go and live your day in the power, the great power of the Holy Spirit. If these devotional videos are helpful to you, subscribe to our channel and click the notification button so you know when we post a new video. And of course, please share them with others.